You know, there's a lot of movies that bomb at the box office, and a lot of them happen to be owned by the Walt Disney Corporation. But this movie in particular that I'm going to talk about here real quick is one that out of all movies that bomb and flop at the box office, this is one that absolutely deserves to flop at the box office. If you hadn't heard of this movie and based on the box office numbers, you probably haven't heard of this movie. This is a film called The Book of Clarence. Uh, This has been promoted for the last several months in a lot of circles and this is a film uh produced by jay-z uh jay-z has his hands uh in this film as well it's also written produced and um directed by james samuel and essentially this is a black jesus movie the way it's kind of shown in the trailer so you think that you know watching it on youtube that oh okay this is just uh, another quote unquote modern take or for a modern audience's version of the storytelling of Jesus Christ and being set in Jerusalem in 33 AD. And you would be wrong. It's actually much more sinister than that. And I'll explain to you in just a second here. But this movie has been out now for about a week. It opened uh, last Friday night. I guess you could say the previews were about a week ago. But it's been out roughly a week. And as of right now, as of this recording, it has only gathered about... Uh, $3.4 million at the box office. Now, you think to yourself, okay, what exactly was the budget for this movie? The budget for this film was $40 million. So if we're going off of a, let's say, a 2.5 uh, metric where a film has to make 2.5 uh, times its production budget in order to actually turn a profit, we're talking about a film here that needs to make, what, about $100 million? Before it was profitable, and it's only May 3, after a week. And when you just look at, you know, the story uh, here, it doesn't get any better. This is a film that got released in 2,000 uh, theaters worldwide. So this isn't, you know, like, like a small movie. It's not like an indie movie that they weren't really expecting anyone to see. They purposely released this film during Martin Luther King weekend under the guise that Black people were going to race out to the theater to support this because, hey, Jay-Z's behind this. And there's other characters. It's an all-black cast. And you can definitely tell they were going for, internally, maybe in their mind, they thought they were going for a Black Panther vibe with this whole thing. But that didn't turn out to be the case here. So why exactly is it that I have such a problem with this film? What is it about this film that I find to be blasphemous personally? And probably why a lot of people also found it to be blasphemous as well. Well, let's jump over to uh, my site here, Society Reviews. Uh, Society Reviews, the site is back up and running. We have all of our um, podcasts here, the movie reviews, retrospective, editorial, everything's back here. And the last article that I wrote here was basically in a review of this movie saying that it's racial hatred and blasphemy mask as entertainment, which is precisely what this film is. Um, if you guys did not check out my Bible Lens um, podcast, I think it was episode 25, about a couple of weeks ago, we did a two-part series where I talked about the ideology behind this film because I think a lot of people, especially Christians, are going to look at this film and think to themselves, oh, okay, this is a Christian movie because it has Jesus in the movie, right? And, you know, even some of the more naive people may think, okay, cool, clearly they're not following the Bible, which... Why would you do a Jesus movie? You're not following the Bible, but it's their own interpretation. And no, actually, it's not. I did a series recently talking about the 5% nation and the nation of Islam. And when you really look back at the last hundred years in this country, why there is such a growing and steady simmering hatred uh, between blacks and whites in this country, especially for the last hundred years, the nation of Islam has influenced a lot of black culture. Uh, significantly over the last several decades and when you actually look back I mean you guys look at what these uh cults and I don't want to call them a cult I want to call them original because like I say when you actually get down to the nitty-gritty and talk about what these people believe it's really cultish they, they believe honestly they believe that black people are gods that white people are devils that white people were created by black scientists I don't know when this apparently happened, but this is also another crazy belief that they held here. And the 5% nation is the big ideology that backs this film here. So when you watch this movie, 
it's not only it's like oh it's just a, a modern adaptation or a modern retelling of a christian story no this film goes very very hard against the fundamentals of christianity and the gospel of jesus christ itself i mean we're talking about a film that completely denies the death burial and resurrection of jesus and goes even further to put clarence here as kind of the jesus figure of the movie now it's not even a surprise or coincidence that the guy's name is clarence because if you look at the founder of the 5% Nation of Islam, uh, whose name was Clarence Smith, a guy who at one point believed that he was God and so so more to the point he actually named himself Allah the Father. And he taught this cult, um, I guess, belief here that black men can become their own gods and that if they only obtain the knowledge needed that they can be just like gods. And essentially, this whole cult is so... It's completely insane and so completely uh, irrational. It makes Mormonism look good by comparison. This is how bad this whole thing is. So you have to you have to dig deeper into what a lot of these movies are trying to profess. Because like I say, if you just take this at face value and you just think to yourself, oh, okay, well, this has to be a Christian movie because, oh, well, there's Christian figures in it. And I know these people from the Bible. It's like, if you don't look at these movies, especially in modern Hollywood today in 2024, and look deeper at the message that they're trying to get across here, you're going to be duped by a lot of the content that's out there. Now, fortunately... Um, their efforts to subvert a lot of the aspects of Christianity and essentially subvert its audience into accepting uh, 5% uh, nation propaganda ultimately failed. Like I said, it's only made $3.5 million after one week at the box office, a whole seven days, and this one's going to lose a whole bunch of money for Sony, and they absolutely deserve it. So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes here and kind of laugh at, at the the uh, effort here, but you have to keep in mind here, it's very early in 2024, and there's going to be a lot more films like this down the pike. This won't be the only big flop, and this won't be the only uh, movie released this year that's going to try to subvert uh, people into something that's far, far sinister. So, um Attempt number one in 2024 definitely went down in flames and well-deserved. So that's all I have to say here. Uh, like I said, definitely go back and check out those two episodes of the Bible Lens podcast. If you really want to get more in depth about the uh, lore behind this whole movie, we even did a review on it very recently. So a lot more information on the YouTube channel, the Rumble channel, on the site as well. So check all that out. I'll see you guys later. Take care and later on. <laughs>